Amazing. So we are now live, I believe. Can everyone hear me? Perfect. Okay. So welcome to our session and welcome to our virtual March open house. Um, I am the host today. So I will just be kind of conducting the session, um, but we do have amazing speakers here to kind of run the session, give you a very informative um, information about what to expect from um, all of our kind of environmental studies programs and whatnot. Um, so we just wanna give a quick land acknowledgement for the land that we are located on which is the traditional and unceded territories of the Algonquin Nation. That being said, we just want to give respect and appreciation for the land that we are located on um, and kind of are able to kind of run all of our events on with Carleton University. With that being said, I will now hide myself and let our speakers kind of conduct our session um, going forward. So feel free to ask any questions that you might have in the chat. <laughs> Great. Thanks, Tatiana. Okay. Hi, everybody. Can you see my screen? Let's... Uh... I'm gonna assume you can see it for now. And my name is Murray Richardson. I'm a uh, professor here in the Department of Geography and Environmental Studies. Uh, I've been working here since around 2009. And I'm here with uh, my colleague and uh, office neighbor just uh, down, down the hall, Paul Williams, who will introduce himself uh, in a bit uh, more detail uh, right after I'm, uh, I've spoken. And I'm also we also have a, a student in our program, Olivia Hobbs, who's gonna answer some questions and talk about her experience in our program. Um, to, uh, towards the in, in the latter half of our presentation. So um, before we start, before I start speaking in, about our programs a bit more, I'd love to hear who's out there. Uh, you know, these these virtual platforms are, uh, it's not always totally clear who's there. I, I did see some guests. If you could use the chat, uh, it would be lovely to hear from you. Maybe just... Um, Mention, how about you tell us where you are right now? It's always nice to know where people are in the world, uh, whether you're in Ottawa or somewhere else. Uh, if you could do that um, over the next uh, 10 or 15 seconds, if you're able to find the chat, uh, it's just nice to know who's there. Um, let's see, oh, there they are in Barrie. There we go, Desmond, thank you. Uh, welcome, you're in Barrie, okay, Montreal. Just now, Ottawa, Katrina, thank you, snowy Ottawa. I think it's probably snowy in Montreal um, and very, uh, I'm not sure how it is there. Anyway, thanks for joining. Uh, so let's get started. The other thing, uh, you know, we'll, we'll actually, I'll, I'll get to that in a second. So let's uh, move our slide here. Hang on one second. So, to start, I'll just say that um, our, our department, Geography and Environmental Studies, is quite abroad. We cover a lot of topics, and, and the first thing I'll mention is that we actually, we're in the Faculty of Arts and Social Science, um, but we also, so we offer a, a both degrees in uh, Bachelor, we offer Bachelors of Arts and also Bachelors of Science. It's one of the unique things about our program in this particular faculty. There's uh, one, uh, one or two others that do the same, for example, psychology, um, that, that also offers the, these two. So the, the entrance requirements, as you would expect, and I'm sure you're all uh, working through uh, admission requirements for different programs. So these are fairly typical. They differ slightly whether you're looking at the BA or the BSc. Um, so uh, that's they're they're listed here, and I don't think I'll in the for the interest of time, I'm not going to go through them in, in detail. They're probably fairly familiar to you um, now that you're embarking on this uh, stage in your your uh, planning of your university careers. Um, but of course, if you have any questions at any time, uh, throw them into the chat. Just type them in there, um, and between. The three of us here, we can handle those. You know, the speaker may not get to them right away, but uh, someone will will uh, will either respond to you or prompt the uh, the current speaker to uh, to, to uh, pay attention to that question. So yeah, feel free to interrupt or and use the not interrupt, but use the chat anytime uh, you need. Them, okay. So the other thing, as I said, we're quite a diverse program, uh, and we have a variety of um, different. Uh, themes and different programs, really. And within each of these areas, we have sub-programs. And we don't have time to go into all of them, but the main the main programs that we have are, are highlighted here. So we have environmental studies, human geography, physical geography, geomatics, and we also have BEGINS program, which, uh, which is a specialization in globalization in the environment. And then we have uh, uh, co-op co -op options, and we have minors, um, and specialization, all sorts of things. So, um, 
And uh, yeah, just checking the chat. So thanks to you know, Paul for answering that. Um, so we have, uh, you know, I like to say to, to students, um, our program <laughs> is, uh, it's a bit of a joke, but you know, it's, it, it, it's it, the reality is we're a medium sized program at a medium sized university and a medium sized city. And that sounds very average, I realize, but honestly, it's the, it's the perfect thing for, for example, you know, my, my, uh, in my experience, I worked, went to a very small undergraduate university and a very large graduate university, Trenton University of Toronto, and, and landed here um, for my career and find it to be really just the sweet spot in terms of, um, uh, you know, uh, the size of the program where you get a chance to get to know your, your professors and classes are not too big, but they're not tiny. Uh, the university has a lot to offer. <laughs> Uh, because it's a medium size, it's not too small, but you don't get lost on campus, it's not too big. And the city also has so much to offer. So there's lots of, in our programs, lots of opportunity to get to know your the, the professors and your teaching assistants, lots of opportunity for hands-on learning, labs, computer labs, in, um, labs in, in, uh, like, uh, in our science program, seminars in our, in our BA programs, and workshops, so it's a really uh, person, personal experience, and I, I think you'll really enjoy it. Um, so I think just to keep moving on, I'll move, up, move to the next slide here. You know, in general, all of these different programs that we offer are structured in these sort of this, this similar way. And this is quite typical. Uh, we've got foundational courses in your first and second year where you get in broad introductions to the scope of, of, of the dis discipline um, that you're, you're embarking on. And you may be taking a few different uh, foundational courses and learning what you like and what you don't like. In the second and third years, you get into more research and, and um, apply sort of methods. So including things like quantitative and qualitative methods and understanding how to work with data and turn that data into information. Um, uh, uh, so methods that are, are used in our discipline. Um, then in third year, we continue that, uh, that journey and get even more specialized. We also offer field courses in the third year. Uh, we have co-op and practicum workplace experiences in the fourth year, and you're getting more and more specialized. And this is, again, a fairly typical uh, work uh, flow of, of your learning and, and journey in an undergraduate program. Um, and then uh, at the top level, uh, in your fourth year, you're getting into uh, thesis and course. Uh, we have a thesis stream where you do a capstone project with an individual professor and you work closely with them. We have a course option, stream option instead of that, if that doesn't uh, appeal to you. And then we have directed studies again, where you can do um, study, you can do course uh, credits, uh, which are very personalized and really something that you want to focus on in that, la in, in that last year. And you can do up to two of those classes, again, working with uh, one uh, professor of your choice. Um, so what we'll do now is I'm going to, we're going to briefly, actually, you know what would be great? And Paul, give me one more second here, is if we just go back quickly so that we can customize our, our talking and time management here a little bit. For those of you that are, are still here, if you could in, enter into the chat, you know, which of these are you most interested in? Like, why are you here? Which one were you hoping to find? Because we do have a broad range of programs. So, you know, if you could indicate what it is uh, that's piquing your interest about the Department of Geography and Environmental Studies of, of these four or five different things here. So environmental studies, is it human geography, physical geography, geomatics? Maybe you don't know, maybe you, you're not sure what the difference is, so that's fine too, but if you have um, anything to help us uh, help us sort of dial in our presentation for you, that would be great. So physical geography and environmental studies. Okay, great. Environmental studies, all of them. Okay, good. So that's sort of all I needed to hear. Uh, this will be helpful for us. So we, we will sort of give equal weight to our different, uh, different uh, programs. Okay, including geomatics and GIS. Okay, so Paul, over to you. Good morning, Hi. everyone. Uh, welcome to uh, to our session. I am a uh, human geographer. I'm a professor of human geography, um, and I do teach occasionally some of the environmental studies courses. I'm also the undergraduate advisor uh, for human geography and environmental studies in the department. Murray is the undergraduate advisor for geomatics and, and physical geography. Um, I, we, uh, we have a large uh, part of our program is is focused on environmental studies uh, it, it's a very popular part of of what we do and uh, environmental studies 
is uh, an interdisciplinary program. Um, it's looking at a whole range of different issues to do with the environment, environmental change, uh, how how uh, policies come into into uh, into being, how how people are uh, are sort of thinking about. Uh, legal issues and other things like that. Um, what's interesting about, about, uh, about environmental studies is it, it brings together the natural and the human sciences, which is, which is one of the sort of uh, unique aspects of, of, uh, of environmental studies and, and looking at how, how we uh, interact with the environment and how the environment affects us. So we're looking at, at biophysical aspects, we're looking at, at, at social aspects. So, so how, are, how are human beings being affected by, by climate change, for example? And, and, uh, and uh, we look also at things like the built environment. So our various activities, how, how are those affecting uh, the uh, the uh, ecology around us and the environment around us, and we we look at the the interconnections then between the the environment and and uh, human beings. So let's uh, move on to the next slide, there, Marie, if you sure. don't mind. So we have we have. Uh, uh, a Bachelor of Arts Honours in Environmental Studies, and to do that, you will take twenty credits uh, over the over the four years that you would be with us, and uh, and we also offer a Bachelor of Arts, which is just uh, which is fifteen credits. Uh, they they have slightly different course requirements. You will be required to do certain uh, certain uh, basic courses at the very beginning, core courses that that you're required to take. Uh, uh, both for the honors and the 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 Bachelor of Arts, uh, and uh, and then uh, we also offer uh, a minor in environmental studies, uh, which uh, which has been fairly popular as well. The type of courses that you'd find yourself taking uh, deal with a whole range of different issues, and and our our faculty have have a lot of of different research areas. So uh, you might find yourself taking courses on nature and environment and society. Uh, in fact, uh, you start off fairly early in the first year with a course called People, Places and Environments, which is Geography 1020, uh, which, which gives you an introduction to some of those things. As you move forward, uh, you might find yourself taking courses in, in sustainable futures, sustainable cities. So how, how are we going to make uh, things work? How are we going to sort of live with the environmental issues we have to deal with and how are we going to cope? Uh, environmental justice is a is a big issue at the moment because how how do we how do we deal with uh, in, environmental impact on different people around the world and and the problems that they face and uh, and and how the big polluters might uh, might be brought into that discussion as well. Obviously, the big one and the big one going forward is climate change, and and that won't change. But what's interesting about our approach to climate change is we're not uh, in environmental studies so interested in the uh, in in the sort of uh, the the scientific uh, physical geography, which Murray will talk about aspects of it, the nat the natural science purely, although that comes into the discussion. But but we're really looking at it in terms of 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 the impact on people and how people are are affecting various aspects of of the climate and contributing to climate change, uh, and then uh, some new new areas that are developing or have been developed um, in looking at things like indigenous ecological ways of knowing. So so how do indigenous peoples, not just in North America around the world, uh, deal with with uh, or interact with the environment and how does that differ from from other cultures uh, so these are some of the things that you you might find yourself looking at uh, and studying if you're taking an environmental uh, ba or ba honors in environmental studies so um, murray let's pop on to the next slide if you don't mind um, environmental studies, obviously, with with the issues we're facing at the moment uh, ar around the world, uh, uh, there there are increasing number of employment possibilities coming up, and we have placed students in all sorts of different areas. Uh, a lot of them are are government based, but but many are non profit as well. So 
so there are Ottawa is 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 um, is great for that, and one of the one of the good things about taking a degree with us is that we are in the national capital with 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 government and all bunch of NGOs here, who non government non governmental organizations and non profit organizations who are interacting with government and they're here because of the because of that fact, and so for things like practicum and co op, there are lots of opportunities. So you could end up being a policy analyst. You could end up um, uh, working on 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 various aspects of natural heritage, climate justice, conservation. Uh, you could become an environmental planner. Our graduates have gone on to work in in Department of Fisheries and Oceans and and for other org organizations like Nature Canada. Uh, one of our uh, one of our graduates there on on the other side there, uh, Samantha, who graduated in 2015 with a with a, a a major in environmental studies and a minor in business, which is interesting, is now a communications officer with the Canadian Nuclear Safety Commission. So lots of possibilities. It's it's one of the growth areas and one of the one of the big things that 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 I I, I think. Uh, uh, gives you lots of lots of opportunities going forward so let, let's move on to the next one Murray uh, so environmental studies is one of my hats um, but I I am a human geographer so we're going to talk a little bit about uh, the the human aspect of geography and uh, and uh, you know if we were in a room together right now I'd, I'd have you all put your hands up and say whether uh, how many of you uh, your memory of geography is is sitting there putting the capital cities on maps and, and naming the provinces and coloring the lakes and whatever else uh, and that is uh, for for a lot of you uh, you might not have actually uh, thought about the term geography since grade nine, because going forward, uh, the the uh, the things that we teach have been renamed in in the high school curriculum. But we are more than just maps. Um, Murray will disagree with me on that because he's a geometrician. But uh, but uh, geography, uh, a particularly human geography, is interested in in looking at people and the places in which they live and the cultures they develop and their sense of 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 identity and belonging my area of expertise is in is in uh, historical and heritage issues in terms of place and identity um, but you could you can look at a whole range of different core concepts place and space being at the at the very core of, of what human geography looks at, but looking at that over different scales from, from your own neighborhood right through to, to uh, global issues. And there are even those who look at, at human geography as it affects uh, our own bodies. So, so those are some interesting elements of that. So we look at scale, we look at identity, we look at community, and we look at where uh, are people and activities located and and why are things going on where they go on pandemic at the moment i've just finished teaching a course on on altered geographies as a result of the pandemic and so uh, that's an example of how we look at at workplace and 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 the fact that we're doing things virtually now so let's move on to the next one Murray. Uh, within within human geography, there again we have a, a BA honors, same same setup, uh, a BA with fifteen credits, a BA combined honors, which you can do uh, with with another discipline. So you take ten credits from geography and ten credits from from another discipline. Uh, we have concentrations in in different aspects. We're developing this all the time, but one of the big concentrations that's getting a lot of interest at the moment is urban geography. Uh, we uh, we also are involved in in a begins program. It doesn't really it falls a bit under human geography, but also environmental studies. Uh, the begins is the Bachelor of Global and International Studies with a focus on globalization and the environment. Uh, you can also do a minor in geography and you can do a minor in urban studies. So next. Um, there again, um, it, it is it is a growth area, and one of one of the things that geography is one of the most employable of all of the disciplines in terms of a degree you you go out up with, uh, mainly because of the types of things you learn and and the way you 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 approach your learning. Uh, we have a lot of a lot of applied uh, courses. Uh, we have uh, we have 
you know, the co-op and the practicum, which we'll talk about. Uh, but uh, the types of jobs that you might find yourself in, a lot of people go on to become teachers, uh, working in international development, urban and regional planners, working with, with, uh, with statistics and population figures as demographers, housing specialists. We've got graduates working in the Ontario, Ottawa Carleton District School Board, Economical Insurance, United Way of Canada, and there's one of our graduates on the other side there who is now Senior Project Officer at United Nations Association in Canada. So next one. All right, Great. so you, Murray. Okay, thanks, Paul. And uh, just one thing I was thinking about as you were, you were talking, and just to reiterate, I think it's probably pretty clear to everyone, but um, interdisciplinarity is probably, if there's one word, only one word to describe our, our programs, I think that would be an important one. Uh, that would be near the top anyway, if, if, if we had to choose. So um, the other thing I'll, I'll mention is, as you're seeing, there are a lot of different programs within each of our different major uh, program areas and I would just want to point out that you can you can switch or uh, you, you can come into our program and you can sort of have a have a little buffet of different uh, different courses in your first year and if you decide that you're more interested in a different part uh, of a different program or, or set of courses within our department you can you can switch there's you, you can always move and some many of your credits are, are gonna they're still gonna count towards your degree and, um, but you can adjust as you go. So that, I think that's a really key thing. Uh, so you can come here with an open mind and and, and know that you're going to find something. Uh, I'm going to talk about physical geography just very briefly. So we have, it's 1026. We're done at 1045. We need at least 10 minutes with Olivia, if not uh, 15. Um, and so let's, uh, I'm going to try <laughs> fairly quickly, but I just want to say if you want to Get, you know, if it's too fast for you, we're compressing a lot in here. You can email Paul or I uh, or, or me. Um, you can look us up. Just Google our names, either Murray Richardson or Paul Williams Carlton, and you'll find our page and you'll find our email. And we're the ones um, to, to talk to if you have questions. So for me, it's mostly physical geography and geomatics questions. Physical geography studies processes and across space and time. That sounds a little bit um, probably uh abstract but it's a really it's a it's a very applied discipline it's a branch of natural sciences uh that um really links major spheres of the earth so in the natural environment the atmosphere the biosphere the geosphere um the hydrosphere water so land um bi eco biology and geology so these are all intertwined um uh, as you can see here chemistry as well uh environmental science so we and we study and te teach about study and, and answer questions that pertain to real world issues and problems and challenges and opportunities. So those of us that teach in geo in physical geography work on on problems such as land use change, impacts on water quality, water flow, flooding, erosion, um, greenhouse gas um, uh, emissions, uh, and inventory. Um, uh, northern environmental change related to climate change, for example, permafrost, um, degradation and movements and impacts on infrastructure. The list goes on and on and on, and I wish I could talk about it more. But these are very applied areas, but we also have a theoretical and a scientific approach. So we, in the physical geography, it's a science program. Our courses are science, feed into science degrees, but you can also take them as, a, as an arts in an EA. Um, which is one of the unique things about our program. But we follow the scientific method. We um, we we and we contribute to the scientific literature in these very applied areas. Um, so let's see. Uh, give, as I said, different degree options: BA, BSc. We have a combined BSc option with our science. We also um, we have a minor option. Uh, the list goes on. Um, and quite, I'd say the majority of students in our physical geography are actually in the BA program. So these are students that um, can you can still get exposure to the science, but you don't necessarily have to have, you, you can get in with the entrance requirements for a BA, and you don't have to take as many other science courses. So this is quite appealing uh, to a lot of people, and that's a great option. Uh, if you're interested in the physical geography side of things, but you maybe don't have the, the science uh, prerequisites. Uh, lots of environment, a huge amount of employment possibility in this area, both public or private nonprofit sectors, um, uh, environmental consulting, hydrology, geotech. Um, 
water quality um, monitoring uh, and uh, measurement and monitoring and modeling. Environmental assessment is a big area. Uh, we have students that work in all of these different spheres, so public, private, and nonprofit, as I said. Um, uh, lots of our students are, are working in government positions in Ottawa, even. Um, so, um, yeah, many, many different uh, options. I'll talk briefly about geomatics as well. And geomatics is, uh, is an, um, a nice uh, so, uh, addition. You can even add it as a minor to your program in one of, any one of the other programs that we offer uh, if you just want some exposure to this. So this is, geomatics is a term that not everyone is familiar with, but it is a disciplinary term. It's the, it's the official term um, for a broad discipline uh, that uh, encompasses various sub-disciplines related to the spatial sciences and geospatial sciences, I would say. So the main sub-disciplines of geomatics are geographic information systems, uh, uh, geodesy, which is the study of the Earth's shape and positioning, which includes G GPS, uh, is a major component of that, and surveying. Uh, and Remote sensing would be the third one. So imaging from without touching is what it means essentially, but this is imaging, especially from satellite platforms, but also airborne uh, and drones is, and nowadays is a major uh, air, new area that I'm involved with a lot, a lot as well. And lastly, cartography, which sort of links in with geographic information systems. Uh, this is a really important field now because it, uh, the tools we use in geomatics are becoming more and more mainstream. Uh, they've moved from being just things used by specialists uh, to the situation where a huge portion of the population has m uh, mobile phones with GPS chips inside, um, and, and we're using location-based services all the time. We're interacting with online maps and using them for not just navigating, but our own personal sort of decision support systems in, in, in our day-to-day -day life. So it's becoming much, much more mainstream, but it's also the, the evolution of these technologies is really percolating into so many different spheres. It's hard to really think of in all of the other programs that we offer in our in, in geography and environmental studies, geomatics can often play a role, whether it's just from making maps to more sophisticated analytical tools. Um, I wish I could talk more about all this, but uh, there just isn't enough time. But Olivia is a, is a uh, is in the geomatics program, so you'll hear more about it uh, from her as well. Again, we have many different options, uh, or three main options are BA honors, BSc honors, and the minor. Uh, uh, you, we also now have a new um, joint program with environmental science, where you can do a double, uh, sort of a joint major with environmental science and geomatics. Um, uh, lots of we're seeing huge uptake of our undergrads in various fields as well. So public, private, and nonprofit once again. Things like GIS analysts and technicians, or remote sensing and mapping, air photo interpretation. Air photos are a little bit. That's a bit of an outdated uh, point there. I mean, air photo, but increasingly actually photogrammetry, digital photogrammetry from drone platforms have become really, really important. It's having a massive resurgence thanks to drones and computer technology. Um, and we have a whole uh, variety of students working in all of these uh, different disciplines. Um, I just want to wrap up uh, before we introduce uh, Olivia and pose some questions to her. And you're welcome to pose those questions as well. Um, we, ha we have a field course, which are local spring and fall um, options versions of that. So Almost all of our programs um, have, most of our programs have an ex a requirement to do uh, one of these field courses. And these are integrative courses where you get some hands-on uh, um, work uh, experience working in the field on both the physical and human dimensions of geography. So you learn field techniques from both the physical geography side, sampling water quality, for example, in soils, to um, human geography uh, and social science aspects, including um, uh, surveying and analyzing survey results about problems such as like water governance or tourism uh, impacts on the local and, uh, economy, these types of things. And those are usually very nearby, like Lanark, Perth, um, and, and so on. Uh, they're, so they're off campus for the most part, uh, or very, and then some components are very near campus as well. 
Um, we also, lastly, I think our last slide, more or less, so we have uh, practicum and co-op options. So all of our programs, pretty much all of them require uh, practicum um, credit, uh, one credit where you have an opportunity to work with um, an, em uh, an employer as an intern uh, for one day a week over the course of one semester, and you get credit for that, and some students even do two two of those. So you get up to one, um, two courses towards your, your degree are to get some hands-on experience in a discipline of your choice. And we have, because we're in Ottawa, there's so many different opportunities um, because we have, um, we have both government and industry and various organizations. So it's really a really uh, key part of our program in the upper year, in the fourth year, and a really excellent experience. And sometimes these even lead to, to directly directly to uh, longer term employment. And then we also have a co-op program as well. So if you have any questions about the co-op, you know, again, just email Paul or me and we'll forward you on to our co-op coordinator, uh, whose name is John Milton. Um, okay, so that summarizes things. And uh, now I'm gonna introduce uh, Olivia. And Olivia is a BA student in our uh, geomatics program. And we were supposed to have another student as well. Uh, I think in the environmental studies, but uh, they don't appear to be here. So the floor is totally now uh, belongs to Olivia, so that she's sort of in the hot seat because she's the only one to answer these questions. But um, we have a list here, and Olivia, you don't need to um, necessarily just work pick through these. Let's just have a bit of a discussion. But I guess just if you could give us a bit of your background uh, and, and thinking, since particular this first point here, why did you choose the pro program? Uh, what are the benefits to GGS and Carl? Did and anything else you want to say about yourself. So hi, I'm Olivia. I'm the president of our student society, QGESA, which is a very long acronym, which is Carleton University Geography and Environmental Studies Student Association. We do a lot of fun things, like we're doing a bird watching walk coming up. We're doing our winter retreat for the first time in two years, which is exciting. Things are finally starting to get back to normal. And then we're doing some more sweater decorating and tote bag decorating. I'm currently doing my practicum with the um, Canadian Organic Growers. I'm redoing some of their mapping on ArcGIS Online. Um, and I'm in my last semester right now, which is very exciting. Great. Great. What, what, um, what led you to, if you could just, I'm sticking to the same question here, like what is, like what led you to choose our program? Uh, like, uh, how did you go through that? Because you, you put yourself back in the shoes that some of our guests are in, like they're trying to find their, their place, right, in their program. So how, can you tell us a little bit about how that was for you? So funnily enough, I did not choose geomatics or anything in this department. I actually started off in the Bachelor's of Global and International Studies in Global Politics. I quickly learned I had zero interest in policy development and was more interested in the science behind the policy. So I was just doing some research on what Carleton programs were available and I found geomatics and I thought it was super neat because it was very interdisciplinary and I was super into archeology span at the time, which worked out because I ended up getting a double minor in archeology span and Greek and Roman studies, which is super easy to do with a bachelor's in geomatics, which is nice. Good. And and what are some like uh, the next question we have here is about courses. I don't know if you can if you are able to pinpoint some key courses, um, but I think even just to give people a flavor of the types of courses, but the ones that you like in particular. Yeah. So some of the fun courses I got to do this year was I did a directed study with Peter Pulsifer. So, uh, mm -hmm. so that was fun. I was interested in community based monitoring, and like that was something I was thinking about. Do I want to do a master's? Would I want to do a research-based master's? So that was something that helped me decide mm -hmm. on that, which was fun. Yeah. It was also neat to get to like put a lot of effort into one topic and just write a mega essay, basically, which was interesting. Great. Uh, I also really enjoyed the cartographic theory and design course in third year in geomatics. I have to admit, I don't take that many human or physical geography courses. I think I took the bare minimum. Yeah, which is what happens when you have two minors. But I really enjoy geomatics. I think it's fun. It's kind of like science and art, where it's like you get to do a lot of creative things, which is I like to switch yeah. up. Did were you always technically inclined, like, or did you develop your sort of um, ability and comfort level with computers and technical aspects through the program? 
Oh yeah, no, I came in with zero experience. <laughs> I still remember my first coding class. It was just pure panic when I first walked in, but yeah. got into a place where I'm relatively comfortable with coding now, which is good. It's pretty neat. Yeah. And what are your minors again? Uh, so I have one in archaeology and one in Greek and Roman studies. Okay, so um, and and, and I, I should I should jump in here for a second. Yeah, yeah. Oh, say oh. to the say to uh, our guests here that that I actually came to geography from a background in archaeology. I was, I was a professional archaeologist for 20 years. And, uh, and so I combined my interest in, in archaeological issues with my interest in, in geographical issues. And, and my, my PhD came out of that combination, the interdisciplinarity there, which is so, so interesting hearing Olivia's background as well with the, with the archaeology and the geomatics uh, shows how, how flexible our programs are and how flexible geography is in, in, in allowing all sorts of different, uh, different things to come together, different disciplines, different ideas. Yeah, absolutely. What, um, so we have about five minutes left and we have a couple more questions on this page, but Olivia, just, I feel like I didn't explain some of the applications of geomatics necessarily very well. And again, I know not everyone's here for the geomatics, but could you give us an example of one or two projects? Is that, sorry, I, didn't, I know we oh, didn't. Oh, no, yeah, that works. Maybe uh, you could so describe a couple projects you've done through your coursework. I'll go off the project I did with Derek, with um, uh, Professor Mueller. So we worked in a group project. This was my first coding experience ever at Carleton. Uh, so we did like a kind of like hybrid where we connected with Transport Canada. And through that, we kind of supported them in like doing a beta run of like coding a, was it flight risk assessment for ARPAs, which are drones essentially, which was mm -hmm. very neat. Um, cool. Like, yeah, like right now, I'm currently working on like doing some mapping of the oat belt in Saskatchewan. Oh, uh, we're yeah. looking at like um, food supply chains, which is really interesting through my practicum placement. Great. So yeah, there's just so many, such a wide variety of uh, applications. So I think um, Nika's right. It would be great. So we do have more questions here for Olivia, but does anyone like we have these predetermined ones? But if anyone in the in the of our guests. I have questions and I see one and I'll read it in a second, but please let's take the last five minutes, few minutes to, to entertain your, your questions. So Bilal, for GIS careers, do you use your computer completely like software jobs or do you often go out in the field to the places you're analyzing? That's a really good question. Um, I can say uh, for, for me and my experience in both the different, um, uh, both in academia, but outside also before and when I worked in, in this field, definitely both. Yeah, but you could have a you could have a job where you only work at the desk, or you could have one where you um, are collecting field data a lot. So I don't know if Olivia, you have anything to add about that from your experience? Uh, no, uh, I've only done desk okay. stuff so far, which is yeah. <laughs> right, and it's probably shaped a little bit by the pandemic impacts of the past couple years. But definitely, Bilal, that's a really good question, and um, I would say both. And you also have the opportunity to focus more on one or the other. Um, Genevieve, uh, what's the difference between globalization environment versus environmental studies? I'll let Paul answer that, if that's okay. Yeah, um, globalization in the environment is is uh, is a program that 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 has a little bit more in the way of of political uh, courses. You you take courses in, in policy and and law. And uh, and so uh, it's it's a little bit more structured uh, towards the policy side and uh, globalization. The, the begins program that does that actually they they require um, an overseas position. You 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 go and, and spend uh, spend a certain amount of time overseas as part of that. Um, we uh, within environmental studies. Um, it's it's a little bit more uh, structured towards. Um, I'm trying to I'm trying to sort of get the right words here, but but we we have we have a sort of uh, um, a, a broader range of issues that that might deal with more local things, more regional things. Um, obviously, glo the global part of it is is always there, but um, 
a lot of our faculty are are working on things like like food security in in local areas. Uh, we have one faculty member who's got a, a strong interest in food issues. So uh, there's not a not a huge difference between them, but but perhaps the begins is a bit more weighted towards the the political side of of it, and and the environmental studies a bit more towards the the activist side and the and the uh, applied side. Great, thanks, uh, Olivia. I, I'm just thinking. I, I don't. There was also a question about an example physical geography lab. So I just teach one physical geography course in hydrology, but I'm wondering, and I can provide an example. But do you have any quick ones that you could provide? Because you probably have a fresher perspective. Uh, I think one of the ones from Jennifer Totten's class would just be um, like tectonic lab. We actually get to go on like a fun little walk over to Hogsback Falls, and you kind of look at like tectonic plates. So it's basically some geomorphic processes and rocks, I guess. We're yeah. kind of lucky we get to walk to like pretty neat nature places from campus, which is nice. Neat. That's great. Um, and yeah, I'm thinking in my hydrology class, Desmond, for example, there's a lot of like number crunching in, in that particular course. It's, it's focused on water movement through watersheds and the impacts of watershed management. Um, on and, and processes and land use change on water flows and water quality, for example. So something like um, delineating the watershed from a, in a GIS of the Rideau River, which is just outside my office, which has a flow gauge there and looking at um, the annual water budget uh, for that large area uh, and maybe looking at how much snow falls in that watershed, They're doing some calculations to look at, you know, what are the or what are the trends in 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 water uh, within that region over that watershed area over time? That's not it's a bit hard to get into in a short uh, period of time, but looking at really a water based water analysis in watersheds would be a good example. Can I, can I just can I just jump in and, and make yeah. a plug for the human geography too? Um, human geography also also gets out of the classroom and and uh, and gets. Uh, uh, out and about around the city, um, we have uh, within our urban studies, uh, we have uh, um, uh, one of our professors who 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 teaches a, a course that's essentially based in in downtown Ottawa. She bases it out of out of Dominion Chalmers, what a former church, and so uh, so we use the city as as a lab as well and look at at how uh, the city has developed and look at at monuments and and uh, and buildings and and the built environment and so on so that's a sort of another aspect of it so it's not not just the physical geography mm -hmm. that's out there in the field it's also the human geographers as well um, great yeah nick has put up urban geography urban geography field course yes uh, jen jen ridgely's course yeah and and uh, that's super. Thanks. And, and Desmond, if you have any other questions, like I, I know there's not a ton of time to give you more examples, but um, you know we could I could easily chat with you on the phone or on a Zoom if you want to ask more, find out more about uh, some of your questions and examples of labs. Are there any other questions at all? It, it's quite a lot to 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 fit into 45 minutes. Sometimes we. Paul and I run separate sessions for the same amount of time to cover the two diff different, because um, they're main different areas in our program. So we were we're fitting a lot in here. So like I said, just follow up with us uh, anytime for more details. So this is just to give you a taste uh, and hope hopefully entice you to to uh, be interested in our program. And I think we're we have we still have a couple minutes. So uh, I mean we're we're at past ten forty five, but I think we're going to go to ten fifty. So if anyone any again any more questions. Um, and if not, Olivia, any last comments or things uh, that you want to say about your maybe where you're heading with your career now oh, or yeah. you're gonna plan, masters maybe or you know, yeah, I'm currently waiting. April, I find out when I get into a master's program. I applied to landscape architecture, so oh, it still wow. uses GIS, but it's also a bit more cool. Yeah, and you can get into that without the undergrad in landscape architecture or architecture. Good, great. At Carlton? No, sorry, I'm abandoning you guys. Okay. It's good to good to switch it up. That's great. Um, well, on that note, uh, any last last chance for additional questions? Once again, please feel free to 
contact us. Okay, Bilal, can physical geography get into careers like hydrology, geology, or geomorphology? Absolutely. So, um, like, to give you an example, Bilal, like, my background is in geography. Well, I did a, a bit of environmental science, but my, uh, I also did geography, and I worked in, a, in um, an engineering and environmental consulting firm, and I did flood hazard analysis, flood hazard modeling, uh, and mapping. So that was my first sort of career, real, real job as my uh, real, real job as my parents would uh, refer to it. Um, and working with alongside geologists and geomorphologists, absolutely, yeah. And, and again, uh, we bring sort of a more holistic perspective of the whole landscape uh, and the spatial aspects of these, um, and we really complement those those fields nicely, and especially if I have a little bit of geomatics so that you can work with the mapping tools as well, which is quite important in the disciplines that you just mentioned. Good, okay, we're at 10.50, so I think there might be a hard cap now. Uh, thank you all for joining. Uh, it was uh, nice to see a decent number of people here from all over the place. I, I noticed I could see where you're from, and, and uh, so, Thanks for participating and for your questions, and please be in touch if you have others. And thanks, Olivia, for joining us and helping us. Yeah, no worries. Great. Are we still live? Yes, okay. <laughs>